Highlight is a brand in the training world that has a huge cult following and that's because they make high quality pieces of equipment, they have excellent customer service and they don't charge astronomically high prices for their gear. In the past they came out with a co-branded trainer with Innovate which was basically the exact same thing as the F-Lite 252. I reviewed it back in the day, I liked it, but it was really no different than anything else that Innovate had on the market. It's been a few years since then, but Hylite has finally come out with another shoe, this time built from the ground up, and that's the Circuit Cross Trainer. So starting with build quality and construction, I gave this shoe a 5 out of 6. The Circuit Cross Trainers are built like a tank. They're very, very sturdy feeling shoes, but they also almost weigh as much as one. With the run midsole in, these things weigh 13.29 ounces, and with the lift and train, it drops down a little bit to 13.19. That is a heavy training shoe. Not to mention, the shoe just also just feels pretty just big. It's a clunky feeling shoe, but like I said, it is very sturdy feeling. The upper construction is a couple different types of meshes. There is a ballistic ripstop nylon mesh that is in the middle of the shoe and that's to protect against rope abrasion and then it comes out to a more breathable softer mesh at the toe box that has a thermally welded TPU overlay around the toe which is somewhat flexible but also gives the shoe a lot more structure and that also carries on over to around the ankle collar there's that same thermally welded TPU overlay that acts kind of like a heel counter as well the tongue on this shoe is a really light, flimsy tongue that's reminiscent of the Metcon series shoes. Not my favorite. I absolutely hate the laces on this shoe. They never stay tied. You get a pair of gray laces as well, but both of them are the same exact thing. Now coming around to the bottom of the shoe, it does have a Vibram outsole and I'm not typically wowed by Vibram anymore, but in this case it's actually really good and the traction of the shoe is amazing, especially for rope climbs. Now the base of the shoe is wide and flat. The whole shoe is basically just a wide shoe. There's an outrigger at the rear of the shoe that catches the footholds of the rower really, really well. And then there's also a lip on the side that gives you a nice solid base to do your lifting in. The biggest selling point of the Circuit Cross Trainers is that they come with three different drop-in midsoles. The technology is not new. This is the same thing that we've seen on the Nike Metcon series shoes ever since the Metcon 1s, but this is the first time that anybody's ever given us the option to swap them out for something different. You get three different options. The zero drop midsole, which is going to be the quote unquote lift midsole and this is 10 millimeters throughout from heel to toe. The run midsole has a six millimeter drop. It's 16 millimeters at the heel, 20 in the midfoot and 10 at the toe. And it also has a ortho light sock liner glued to the top for a little bit more comfort. And finally you have the train midsole which is four millimeters in drop. And this is 18 millimeters at the arch 10 millimeters at the toe, 14 millimeters at the heel. This one also has an ortho light sock liner glued to the top of it. All of them have the same basic design. They have all these four foot flex grooves. The train model is a medium density midsole that offers pretty good impact protection, but doesn't detract from stability at all. The run model feels very, very similar to the train model, but it is a little bit thicker. This is the one that you're going to use for running because it offers a little bit more cushioning. The lift model, which is my favorite midsole, is the densest of them all. It's also the flattest. This one actually feels very different than the other ones. This one is less flexible, but it is extremely stiff. A few more things about Build Quad is that these are extremely rugged shoes. I ran them on the rope probably about 20 times total and they still look fairly new. This mid part does a really good job in deflecting the rope against rope abrasion. But there is one worrisome thing and that comes from swapping the midsoles in and out and that is this heel pad. It's already starting to fray a little bit because of the friction of putting in and taking out the drop in midsoles. Hopefully that doesn't develop any holes, but that is a little bit worrisome because you can already see wear there. 
I gotta give Hylia a hand for being the one to finally give the user the option to switch out their drop in midsoles. This is something that I've wondered for a long time from Nike, but it's probably never gonna happen. So thanks a lot, Hylia. Oh, and despite the drop in midsole technology, these shoes do not squeak. For fit, I gave these shoes a 5 out of 6. Initially, when I first got them, I thought they ran a little bit small, but with a little bit of a break in, they started to get a little bit more comfortable. Though, I would still say that if you're in between sizes, go up half a size. They're a little bit snug on me, but they're not uncomfortable. I size them the exact same as I do my Metcons and my Nanos, which is the US Men's 10. The Metcons feel a little bit bigger than these shoes, and the Nanos feel a lot bigger than these shoes. The overall width of the shoe is very, very wide. I think wide footers are really going to like that, but you're not going to like the train or the run midsoles because they do have a raised arch that is four millimeters up. That will probably kill your feet if you have flat feet. The only one that's probably going to fit you really well is the lift midsole which is flat completely throughout. Now another thing about having the lift midsole in is that you will get a little bit more space inside of the shoe because it is a thinner midsole than the run or the train midsoles. When you have the run midsole in, you lose space inside the shoe obviously. So you're going to have to probably play around with which one you like the best. I'm going to say that even though it is a wider fit, this is probably going to fit normal feet the best. For flexibility and comfort, I gave the shoe a 3.5 out of 6. These are not the most flexible shoes. And like I said, they feel really big and bulky. There's really no flex grooves besides that toe area. And even then, it doesn't flex all that great. Notice how as I bend, it's like flexing the middle part of the shoe and not necessarily the toe area of the circuit cross trainers. Doing burpees, box jumps, you can really feel the clunkiness of these shoes. Also due in part to that really flat outsole. These are not the best or most agile shoes. And even though you do get like a run midsole, you're not gonna wanna do any kind of running in these shoes. They're just not good running shoes at all because of just how flat and wide they are. Big shoe, not agile, but decent enough for training. I'm not gonna say that they're the worst, um, but they are definitely not the best. They're kind of middle of the road. For stability, I gave these shoes a 5.5 out of 6. While they're not a flexible or agile shoe at all, that wide base plus the weight of the shoe makes them a really, really stable shoe. The drop in midsoles, no matter which one you use, are all fairly responsive. Even the run midsole you can use for some of the lighter weightlifting Metcons, whereas I would stick to the train and the lift midsoles for pretty much everything else. Honestly, even though I like the feel of the lift midsole the best, I find myself using the train one the most because it offers a pretty good blend of responsiveness and cushioning at the same time, all while remaining extremely stable. I found myself wanting to go for these shoes for pretty much all of my heavier lifts during the testing. The responsiveness of these shoes is excellent. I really like using them for Olympic weightlifting movements. Pretty much anything overhead feels really, really stable in these shoes. These are the best rope climbing shoes that I think I've ever used in my life. They're just a really solid pair of lifting shoes and I wouldn't hesitate to use these over like my Metcons or my Nanos. For value, I gave these shoes a 3.5 out of 6 or a 5 out of 6, depending on how much you can get them for. They retail for $150, and that, that's your price, then I'm going to say 3.5 out of 6. But if you're part of the Highly team, which a lot of people are, I'm going to give these shoes a 5 out of 6, because they only retail for $108 for that team discount. I think for $150, you're better off getting something like the Metcon 4s, or the Nano 8s, even though you don't have the adjustability of changing out the midsole, those are better training shoes just overall. If you can get these shoes for $108, then you know that's a pretty good deal. If you don't mind the sheer heft of the shoe, or if you wanted something that you just wanted to lift in, 
or you wanted a good rope climbing shoe, or you just wanted to try something new, then I could definitely recommend these for $108. But for $150, that's kind of a stretch, especially given the kind of whatever looks. I mean, that's a very subjective thing, but I don't really think that you're gonna wear these anywhere other than the gym. And then the fact that, you know, Hylite, this is their first real built from the ground up shoe. Durability is yet to be determined. We don't know what that's going to end up being like, even though they do feel like they're pretty well made. So the final score of the Circuit Cross Trainers is either 22.5 or 24 out of 30 points. And that is if you're paying $108 for them or $150 from them. I like these shoes. I don't think they are a bad shoe at all, and I really give to Hylite for finally giving the user the option to switch out their drop-in midsoles. Is it the perfect shoe? No, but it's a really good first effort from Hylite, and like I said, this is a really good shoe for lifting. I don't really care for the styling of it. I wish that they would have gone in their own direction. I mean, let's be real, they do look like Metcons in every single way, and they also have the technology of Metcons as well. But it is their first built from the ground up shoes, so you can't really blame them for wanting to take the safe route with the circuit cross trainers. Overall, great shoe, even better if you can get them for $108, but $150, I think you're better off getting something like the Metcon 4s or the Nano 8s. If you guys have any questions about the circuit cross trainers, feel free to leave them in the comment section. And as always guys, hit that like button, subscribe, and thanks for watching.